It's Thursday, October 10. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. The Norman Manley International Airport is now certified for aerodrome operations. Stakeholders gathered at the Ministry of Transport and Mining's offices for the certificate handover ceremony recently. The certification comes one year after a multi-million dollar crash simulation exercise, the first of its kind in Jamaica. According to Transport Minister Robert Montague, Montego Bay's Donald Sangster International Airport is already certified and plans are far advanced for Ian Fleming to be certified. President of the Airport Authority of Jamaica and CEO of the Norman Mann International Airlines Limited, Audley Diedrich, says the milestone means more training for pilots, air traffic controllers, instrument officers, mechanics and aviation IT personnel. Results for the Grades 4 and 5 Performance Task Primary Exit Profile PEP exams have been sent to schools for review and distribution. The national report will be published after all schools have completed their review of the results. Speaking at a post-Cabinet press briefing Wednesday, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Dr. Grace McLean, said there are anomalies with some of the test scores and those are being reviewed by the relative schools. She explained that issue surrounds the 208 students who simultaneously sat the Grade 4 Literacy and Numeracy exam as well as the Performance Task test. And so what we have done is to send these to the schools so that they can do their review we can further the investigation and then we will be able to see the population or the numbers or the percentages that fall into the different category. Dr. McLean says the schools have been given a month to provide the grades. Within another week or so, that report is to be completed and we will do the national report for the performance task and for grade four, that will be ready by about the second week in, in November. Meanwhile, the results of the Grade 4 component of PEP have seen an improvement. According to Minister Without Portfolio with Responsibility for the Education Ministry, Carl Samuda, literacy scores improved by 1%. The Grade 4 Literacy and Numeracy Test, it is interesting and very encouraging to note that in the area of literacy, um, we are at 83% which is 1% point over last year. But the area of real success and encouragement to the ministry and to, should be to Jamaica generally, is the increase in numeracy, which has moved from 74% up, 74% and that's up 6% over last year. With numeracy being a constant challenge, Minister Samuda praised the improved results and those working for further improvements. And commendation is due to the teachers and the whole educational effort by all the members of that ministry. PEP is the series of tests that have replaced Grade 6 Achievement Test as the National Secondary School Entrance Examination. It is intended to provide a better and more complete profile of students' academic and critical thinking capabilities at the end of primary level education. Residents of Yala St. Thomas are to benefit from a new fire station. This was disclosed by Minister with Responsibility for Information, Carl Samuda, at Wednesday's post-Cabinet press briefing. The works will include the construction of a two single story structure, two single story structures using reinforced concrete and beam construction to house firefighting equipment, engine bays, um, dormitories, as well as administrative and training facilities. Cabinet also approved the use of $100 million from the Land Administration and Management Program LAMP Fund as grant funding to support land title for about 2,000 beneficiaries. Partial funding of $20,000 will be offered as a full grant to landowners and up to a maximum of $50,000 will be given as a conditional grant which should be repayable only if the land is sold within five years of receipt of the grant. A caveat will be lodged against the certificate of title to protect this interest. 
Minister Samuda noted that the funds from LAMP will not deplete the resources of the fund. He added that the fund will also be replenished from fees and charges from the beneficiaries of the grant. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Kamina Johnson-Smith joined 52 Commonwealth Trade Ministers at the second meeting of the Commonwealth Trade Ministers on the way in London. The meeting is convened under the theme Advancing or Shared Prosperity. The ministers are discussing strategies to boost trade. Mrs. Johnson-Smith says that the meeting is being used as a platform to support the implementation of the Commonwealth Connectivity Agenda for Trade and Investment. The outcomes of the meeting will help shape trade-related discussions at the next Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting scheduled for June 2020 in Rwanda. $100 million has been earmarked for redundancy payments related to staff cuts at the National Energy Solutions Limited Nestle and Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, the PCJ. The Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology, or MSET, plans to subsume the entities as part of a wider rationalization program. Minister of Science, Energy and Technology Favel Williams shared the information at a press conference this week, but she did not disclose the number of staff members to be made redundant. The redundancy exercise at Nestle is expected to be done by the end of October. The staff and trade unions have already been advised. Recent work done on the Mandela Highway is being blamed for the flooding that occurred along Riverton Boulevard on Spanish Stone Road on Wednesday. Businesses along that corridor were flooded and operations halted after a heavy downpour which lasted an hour. It produced flood waters that were reportedly two feet high in some places. Chief Executive Officer of Nakash Construction, Christopher Nakash, said he instructed his staff to seal the doors with waste cloth and to stack sandbags behind the doors, but their efforts proved futile. Another business operator blamed the recent work being done on Mandela Highway for the flooding. Members who are to be a part of the Joint Select Committee of Parliament to review the Customs Act 2019 were named during the Tuesday's sitting of the House of Representatives. Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, who will sit on the committee, said he'll be joined by Favel Williams, Marlene Malahu Fort, Dr. Norman Dunn, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, Mark Golding, Anthony Hilton, and Noel Arscott. They will sit jointly with members to be appointed from the Senate to consider and report on the bill. The government is repealing and replacing the Customs Act in order to modernize the customs practices and procedures so as to effectively and efficiently facilitate trade. Modernization is expected to improve customs clearance and revenue collection, simplify procedures for businesses and provide more efficient service delivery to the public. This week on Our Healthy Living Report, we continue to look at pain and pain management. According to MedicineNet.com, pain is an unpleasant sensation that can range from mild, localized discomfort to agony. We're exploring how to identify pain sources and how to manage pain. When some people are talking about chronic pain, they often seek to get an MRI, a magnetic resonance imaging, or a CT scan. Now, before we ask Dr. Baylin about these diagnostic options, let's define them. An MRI is a test of the brain and spinal cord that looks for, among other things, blood vessel damage, brain injury, cancer, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, stroke. A CT scan combines a series of X-ray images taken from different angles around your body and uses computer processing to create images of the bones, blood vessels, and soft tissues inside your body. CT scans can show a tumor's shape, size, and location. Doc, when is it a, a necessary option to do an MRI or a CT scan? If you do your full clinical examination, and you find no problems, 
and, you refer, and in, in, in my practice, I personally, I refer my patients to the appropriate specialist, whether say a neurosurgeon, orthopedic surgeon. And then we work together, and then I discuss with them the need for the MRI. Because remember, when a person has an MRI, if something is a problem with it, what next? And so therefore, if I'm looking down the line, I'd like to be able to work with colleagues in that area so we can then decide where to go next. I think many MRIs we do uh, is really patient driven because people feel that I have a pain, something must be wrong. And that's when the, one of the issues I, I want to stress again is that it's not necessarily that there's a physical structure which is causing your pain. Because uh, I've asked people who go for MRIs and because, of, because they've been so persistent, I must have an MRI, must have an MRI, must have an MRI. And sometimes they don't do it and they'll go to somebody else and have the MRI done. But I always advise that if I'm going to do an MRI, I will consult with another, uh, another specialist in a particular area. So it's a, if you're having back pain, I'd want to speak with my neurosurgeon or my orthopedic surgeon, a back spine surgeon, and say, look here, I have patient uh, Mary Jane or John Smith, and we're going to do an MRI. And this is, this is my findings, and I'll over to you after that. And that person, if they don't, they have to understand that that is a way to properly treat and manage what's going on. Because many MRIs are negative and a person has pain. It's interesting that you brought up the idea of back pain. I know a lot of people have arthritic pain, but a lot of cases are uh, complaints about pain in the back area. What are some of the common causes of back pain? Well, um, we, we want to look at, first of all, just to mention what is back pain. It's not always spine. The back is composed, the whole back structure, just very briefly, is con con composed of what? You've got the skin, you've got the muscles, you've got tendons, you've got ligaments, and you have the joints. The joints that lower the back and the neck to move. Now, each one of those structures can have a pain issue. And it's, and it's, and it's also, um, it can be, re it will be present as back pain. So a back pain does not necessarily mean there's something wrong with your spine. And that's one of the most difficult things, because people believe once it's back pain, the spine is done. And that is not necessarily the case. So the, what are the common causes? Our posture. Remember, uh, our upright posture um, allows us to get pain. And then when we sit, like I'm sitting now, not properly, you're not fully, fully supporting, you're in a position. Where we're working nowadays, where we're, having, we're looking at computers, we're in, in bad, bad um, positions, the, the keyboard is too high or too low, the neck is in one position for many hours, it puts strain on the muscles, we end up with pain. Uh, overweight, and uh, so that you have a, a big tummy, you're causing more stress on the lower back. The, usually when people have low back structure, it's usually the lower, the vertebrae in the back, it's usually the lower lumbar vertebrae, the four and the five and the five and the, the S1, those are low vertebrae that tend to have the more strain and they tend to be degenerated. Uh, so, in terms of what causes pain, what's a common cause? Uh, degeneration, as we get older, we get changes in the, in the, in the, in the structure, you know, in, and we get we call osteophyte arthritic changes, and therefore that, can, then that may precipitate some, some of the pain as well. So, you just mentioned the issue of back pain. What are some of the common causes of back pain? First of all, just to mention what is back pain, it's not always spine. The back is composed, the whole back structure, just very briefly, is con con composed of what? You've got the skin, you've got the muscles, you've got tendons, you've got ligaments, and you have the joints. The joints that lower the back and the neck to move. Now each one of those structures can have a pain issue. And it's, and it's, and it's also, um, it can be, it will be present as back pain. So a back pain does not necessarily mean there's something wrong with your spine. And that's one of the most difficult things, because people believe once it's back pain, the spine is done. And that is not necessarily the case. So the, what are the common causes? Our posture. Remember, uh, our upright posture um, allows us to get pain. And then when we sit, like I'm sitting now, not properly, you're not fully, fully supporting, you're in a position. Where we're working nowadays, where we're, having, we're looking at computers, we're in, in bad, bad um, positions, the, the keyboard is too high or too low, the neck is in one position for many hours, it puts strain on the muscles, we end up with pain. Uh, overweight, and uh, so that you have a, a big tummy, you're causing more stress on the lower back. 
usually when people have low back structure, it's usually the lower the vertebrae in the back, it's usually the lower lumbar vertebrae, the four and the five and the five and the, the S1. Those are low vertebrae, they tend to have the more strain and they tend to be degenerated. Uh, so in terms of what causes pain, what's a common cause? Uh, degeneration as we get older we get changes in the in the in the in the structure. What are some of the things that we can use at home in order to alleviate some of our painful situations? Well we're hearing about uh, the non-communicable diseases and get Jamaica Jamaica moves. Mm -hmm. One of the best treatment for back pain is activity and exercise. Despite what we feel that we need to lie down and rest, you relieve the pain and move. So therefore, um, one, I want you to, everybody should be exercising. Two, look at our posture, look how we sit, look how we, when we're driving, do we sit and slouch, we get all those things right. And then obviously there's basic things like our diet and all the rest of it for general improvement of our health, uh, that, goes, that goes a long way. If it works with back pain, blood pressure, all the pains that we have. My granny told me that like, barium and pimento, if you sap an area, it will, help to alleviate the pain? Do you ascribe to those kind of um, treatments? Yes, we have to look at all those things because uh, remember, you know, I was taught in my early days that 60% of people who, who, get, who, who are sick treat themselves and don't go to a doctor. So 60% get better without going to a physician. What is doing it? Herbs were around, the different methods were around, and, and, um, and they do work. Because uh, if you look at many of the preparations that we have, for pain, it incorporates those things. You know, the, the, the menthol, you know, our, our um, non steroidal inflammatory acids, um, non steroidal and inflammatory analgesics, and it also incorporates um, other agents inside it, things like or pimento, things like, you know, these things, um, we can't dispute them. I don't dispute them. If it works for you, take it. If it not cause no harm, take it and use it. Sometimes you find it works for this month, next month it doesn't work. We find something else that works. But move along. All right, so but when do you decide, okay, really, I have to go to a specialist now, it's getting too much? When do you decide? Well, yeah, well, when you should think, you? If, if, if you have a pain acutely, come on. Say, for instance, a back pain or a knee pain, and you're treating it with the home remedies, um, for you know, a few days a week, the pain is increasing. You need to get it looked at to ensure that there's, there's no physical cause. Remember, I say that's what we do the investigations for. Am I seeing a fracture? Am I seeing a slip? Something has moved out of position, and that way, once you say no, it's not there, then you can go. We can go back to our our, 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 treat, our other treatment. So I think if you had a few days and the pain is getting worse, then definitely go and see someone. Speaking of seeing a specialist, Dr. Berlin is about to see a patient, and we'll be sitting in on the visit. So. If you've ever wondered what it's like to go to a specialist, well, you're in luck. I see you, you, you come to see me because you have a pain issue. Yes, eh? yes. Okay then. Okay, just before we start, I just want to go through a few things with you. You've filled up some of my questionnaires. Yes. Because one of the things that about chronic pain is not only about what pain you're having, but how the pain affects you and, also, and how it... Uh, so I want to just go through some of the things with you here. Okay. Just very quickly, so we can see. So you're saying to me, you're, uh, this, what your picture you've shown me here? Yes. This picture you showed me here, you're having pain on the right side, going down your right arm. Yes. And your right hip. Going down to your, your to your ankle and your toes, yes. and also affecting the buttocks area. Yes. yes. Right. And you're saying to me there that uh, yes, you said that your pain is in the last 24 hours has been nine out of ten the worst, yes. and three out of ten the best. On average, you have a five out of ten, oh, and your pain is nine right now. Right. What the pain? When did it start? Um, about three, four days ago. Three to four days ago. Yes. And uh, he's never had that pain before? Before, but uh, it's been on and off. 
uh, it was a car accident, mm -hmm. yes, and I had a broken hip. Okay, and where where was it? Where is it broken hip? On that same side? Yes, on that All same right. side. Yeah. Motorists should get some relief at the pumps as prices of gasoline and diesel have fallen. Effective today, Thursday, October 10, 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $125.28 and $128.12 per litre, respectively, each down by $2.72. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $133.26 per litre, following a decrease of $3.06. Ultra-low sulfur diesel is down by $2.25 and will be sold for $137.92 per litre. Meanwhile, kerosene decreased in price by $2.85 and will be sold for $112.50 per litre. Propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $39.97 per litre, down by $1.50. And butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $45.52 per litre, after an increase of $0.25. Cents. Do remember, marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. The US dollar on Wednesday, October 9, ended trading at Jamaican $136, up by 25 cents. According to the daily exchange trading summary, the Canadian dollar ended trading at $102.01, up from $101.61. The British pound sterling ended trading at Jamaican $164.27, down from $165.77. In regional news, CARICOM chairman Alan Chastanay says a technical team that was being put together for a fact-finding mission to Haiti had been placed on hold due to worsening civil unrest in that country. Haiti has been experiencing a series of deadly protests amid allegations that President Jovenel Moise mishandled the economy, leading to chronic food and fuel shortages. There are calls for the Haitian president to step down. 17 people have been killed across the country during the nearly one month long series of protests. Trinidad and Tobago's finance minister Colm Imbert presented the country's budget in Parliament on Monday. TTT's Mahalia Joseph Wharton has the highlights of the presentation. Minister Imbert said the revised estimates for 2019 indicate that total expenditure for the year is now estimated at $50.5 billion, a decrease of $1.27 billion from the originally budgeted expenditure of $51.77 billion for 2019. There will be provisions within the budget to assist single working mothers. Daycare centers for children under three years old throughout the country will be established. Minister Imbert said the recently concluded tax amnesty was a success. $2.382 billion was collected during the three-month tax amnesty. There will also be a removal of all taxes and duties on LED bulbs for five years. The government will also be replacing all incandescent bulbs to more energy-efficient ones to households free of charge across Trinidad and Tobago. When it came to the allocations, expenditure for education and training were the highest allocations at $7.548 billion for education and $6.440 billion for national security. The health sector received $6.084 billion. Public utilities received $3.047 billion. Works and transport, $2.956 billion. Local government, $2.469 billion. Housing, $1.007 billion. And agriculture, $0.708 billion. Other highlights of the budget include the ban of styrofoam in the food industry and to terminate the use of plastic water bottles in government offices from January 1, 2020. Daily paid workers in public service will be eligible for minimum public service pension of 3500 a month. 
This will be a contributory pension plan and it will take effect in 2020. A technical study has found that plantation white sugar can be used to replace refined sugar and in fact is being used in manufacturing processes within CARICOM and elsewhere in the world. The Caribbean Development Bank funded study is said to have changed the tone of a trade dispute among CARICOM producers. Interest groups came away from a series of meetings in Belize where the report was presented, saying talks from October 2 to 4 made more progress in the past week than in the past several years in resolving the long-running standoff between sugar producers and manufacturers over the quality of white sugar. The two sides are fighting over the high volumes of refined sugar being imported into the region to the disadvantage of regional producers of plantation white sugar. In sports, Khadija Shaw is now Jamaica's all-time leading goal scorer with 40 goals. The Rankers made hers with her five-goal tally against the U.S. Virgin Islands in CONCACAF Caribbean Group B Olympic qualifiers at the National Stadium Tuesday night. The record was previously held by former Harborview and Jamaica forward Luton Shelton with 35 goals. Shaw, who played for Jamaica's under-15, under-17 and under-20 teams in the same year at just 14 years old, made her senior international debut in a 6-0 win over Dominica Republic in 2015, scoring a double in that game. It took her only 27 more games to get the milestone. And that's the news on PBCJ. Remember, we are the People's Station.